Hello guys, today we are talking about the runtime analysis of inserting n items into an empty set. Suppose I have n items as an input to my function, and I create a new SCD set, and I want to insert them one by one inside the set. We know that SCD set is implemented using trees, therefore each insert, the runtime of each insert should be O of log of the size of the set. That means the total runtime is equal to when the size is 1 is log of 1 plus log of 2 when the size is 2 and so forth up to log of n. Now I can say each term on this expression is less than or equal log of n and replace them one by one by log of n so this inequality will hold and then I can say I have n times log of n therefore t of n is less than or equal n log of n and then after that, I can say t of n is equal o n log of n, which is fine. But the main problem here is that we actually have two problems. First of all, we only found an upper bound. So this is o. We didn't find omega or theta. And then we also don't know if this upper bound that we found is a tight one or is a loose one. And the main reason for this, the main culprit for this was this inequality. If we could find something that was uh, equal relationship, these two problems would not exist. Our main problem right now is causing by this, so we don't know this is we don't know the lower bound, and we also don't know if this is a tight upper bound. And uh, in order to understand this a little bit better, look at this expression one more time and see like if we weren't careful and replace this log of n instead of log, uh, log terms instead of log of n, if we replace them by n, which is uh, greater than log of n for values high, uh, for high values of n, then we would get for each term we would get n and then n multiplied by n. Therefore, we could have said t of n is equal to o of n to the power of two. The problem with this is that this is a loose upper bound. This is still correct. This is a correct relationship. This is a correct um, runtime analysis. But what we found is a looser upper bound compared to what we previously found, which was O of n log n, which grows slower than O of n to the power of 2. Therefore, right now, our T of n is really, we found two upper bounds for it. First one is n log of n. The second one is n to the power of 2. And then we don't know if there's anything tighter than these two. That's our first problem. And then the second problem is that we don't know any lower bound for it. Uh, there's this obvious lower bound one, but we don't know if there's any tighter one. So let's see if we can find something that rather than inequality relationship, we can find something that is uh, equal relationship. That will give us a tighter lower bound and upper bound. All right. So, so now in order to get equality, let's look at this expression one more time. I remember from basic algebra that whenever you have a sum of logarithmic values, you can write all of these as a log of multiplication of these values inside parentheses. So this would be log of 1 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 3 and up to n. And then this will reduce to log of n factorial. And notice like so far, I kept my equal relationship. I did not change anything to less than or equal. Moving on, we use something that's called Stirling approximation. Don't get scared by this formula. All it's saying is that n factorial can be approximated by this function. Again, don't get scared by this very simple one. Uh, and then this graph on the right side shows how close these two functions grow. The pink one is the function on the right side, and the blue one is n factorial, which, which are very close. Now, we're going to make an assumption here and say these two are exactly equal. This is an assumption that we make, but it's not a horrible assumption because we can see that these two are very close to each other. Now, as soon as you make this assumption, then we have an equality relationship by, as, by computing the log of both sides. So log of n factorial is what we want to calculate. And then we calculate the log of this term on the right-hand side, which would be this here. And remember that we converted it, this approximation to equal, and this is not an outrageous conversion. Now, how did we get to this right expression? It's very simple. So remember, again, from basic algebra, uh, this power comes out and then you have log of n and then because you have division you get a minus again this n comes here log of e would be 1 so you don't see it here square root would translate to 1 over 2 and then log of n plus log of 2 pi again whenever you see this uh, equality 
we can do two things. First of all, get rid of everything that grows slower than your uh, the, the term that grows fastest. Here, the term that grows the fastest is n log of n. We can get rid of everything else compared to this. Now I can say t of n has both an upper bound and lower bound of this larger term. You can do this with every function. Whenever we find, uh, we can write t of n as a function of n. If it was an equality, we can get rid of these terms that are that grow slower and keep the one that grows the fastest. And then say this is both an upper bound and lower bound. Therefore, based on this, I can say t of n has o of n log of n, and t of n has omega of n log of n. Basically, I now have, I now proved somehow that this O of n log of n is a tight upper bound. And not only that, it's also a tight lower bound. And based on this, I can say T of n is omega of n log of n. Sorry, it's a theta of n log of n. And having a, a, and being able to say something is theta compared to some, saying something is O or big omega, is a very stronger position. So you should make sure that every time that people are asking you to get to uh, to calculate runtime, you see you should see if you can calculate theta rather than big O, which is very common. And usually you can do this if you can hold your relationship just like what we did here. Uh, instead of instead of uh, uh, inequality, keep the equal, and then once you have that, you can get to big theta rather than big O or just big omega. All right, what you need to take away from this short lecture. When you're doing a runtime analysis, you're often asked to find big theta, not big O. So I know in many um, job interviews or exams, people are asking you to do runtime analysis. Somehow, even the interviewer makes a mistake and they don't really know that what they are expecting is called big theta, but they might ask you big O. So remember, uh, always, in most, not always, but most of the time, what people are asking you is big theta, not big O. And then try to find a tight bound, as tight as you can. So first of all, try to find big theta. That means find both lower bound and upper bound using equality, not inequality. And also um, uh, pay attention to loose bounds, although are correct, like the n to the power of 2 that we found, but usually they're not as useful as tight bounds. And then finally, try to find an equality relationship, just like I said, not an inequality. So inequality is good. We use it just when we can. But getting to this puts you in a very strong position to find the big theta. Thank you very much. I hope this was a clear lecture and you guys should be able to use this in your exams and your job interviews. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.